Welcome. In this video, we take on scenario three of Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, the Black Ship. It's down at the table, we've got most of the items set up here for our introduction. After getting your fill of stew and plenty of rest at the Sleeping Lion, you start off early in the morning. The first order of business is looking for information on someone named Roland. He seems to be making a trade out of buying fresh corpses and you'd like to know why. It's slow going at first, but you eventually find a pair of vermlings down at the sinking market who seem overly interested in cadaver disposal. After some rough persuasion, they cough up that they too are being paid by a man named Roland to deliver bodies. They even give you the drop-off location, some derelict ship at the old docks. You head down to the pier and look around. It doesn't take long to spot the suspicious vessel. Not only is it leaking some vile black liquid from the hull, but there are two men wearing red robes standing guard outside the dock. They notice you eyeing them and begin making threatening gestures to you to move along. Looks like getting to the bottom of this is going to require cracking a few more skulls. So our special rules is uh, make sure characters add the first two ability cards marked one to their deck. So we'll have eight cards to start with, which we have done. Got a tip up here. So our layout is page six and seven. Open the supplemental scenario book to page two to find the rest of the scenario. So we'll go here and that just shows us a conclusion, which we're not ready to read just yet. Also, whenever a character opens the first door, we'll read section one above and then two from here. And we've got some difficult terrain, requires two movement points to enter unless you have jump. So we're gonna have some zealots in this. They've got six health, two movement, two attack. And then we're gonna have some vipers. Uh, the normals are three health, two movement, one attack with poison. And we will have an elite, five health, two movement, and two attack. And some more things we'll be learning here. So we went over difficult terrain, section breaks, uh, new action mechanics. We'll be able to gain some experience with some actions. Active bonuses. We'll have some persistent and round bonus effects going on. Possibility of being shielded. Jumping so we can ignore terrain. Some new conditions to worry about. A new long rest. Uh, so this is another type of turn. Instead of playing two ability cards, we just say we're taking a long rest. We'll be at initiative 99. We get to choose one of our discarded cards to transfer to the lost pile, then pick the rest up, heal two, and upright any of our spent cards. And let's see, talks about the monster active bonuses. So we know poison's gonna be a problem. And with that, I believe we're ready to get started. We do have Hatchet at eight health and a poison dagger and a healing potion. So the potion during your turn, we can heal ourselves for three. And the dagger during our melee attack, add poison to a single attack. And poison will all attackers gain plus one when attacking, prevents a healing and remove one healed. And Red Guard starts at 10 health. With a Stamina Potion, during your turn, return one of your discarded cards to your hand. And an Iron Helmet. When attack, consider any times two attack modifier card the enemy draws to be a plus zero instead. So we'll go ahead and get started with Hatchet, ready for some stopping power and close cuts. We'll go with the initiative of 25. And then Red, Swift Strength, Shocking advance with an initiative of 14. And then our Zealots shuffle their cards a little bit. And they'll be starting initiative 77. The Vile Scourge, uh, movement minus one, attack minus one, but they will be poisoning us. So we've got Red going first, then the Hatchet, and then the Zealots. So he's going to move two while jumping. Uh, then he'll have shield one for the end of the round. Then he's going to attack three and immobilize. Zealot number five. So starting out with a plus zero. So three damage on him. Then hatchet going to 
Immobilize, targeting one adjacent enemy, which doesn't happen, but you gotta move three, one, two, and three. So he can set up his close cuts. All enemies in the target area suffer three damage plus a separate modifier for each. So the one on up top, base three, so we're doing two damage to him, which is one less than what's needed. And then down here, we're doing five damage. So we didn't take down either one of them. And that is Zealot number one. So they are both going to target the same guy because when it's even, they'll target the one that, well, actually, no, he'll be targeting red up here. So one goes after this one. So he's a base attack of one. So zero damage, but the poison still comes through. And I'll go ahead and just put that on my miniature so I can remember. Then this one's going after red. It's a base one. So doing one damage to red. And poison. Oh, he does have shield one, so he did not take that damage. So now end of turn. That gets discarded. For our next round, uh, Hatchet is going to go with the favorite and disoriented barrage with an initiative of 17. Red, blinding sickle, and flaming sickle, initiative of 87. Our zealots will be going at a 27. So we've got Hatchet, zealots, and the red guard. So we're going to go with his movement first. He can move up to two hexes away. I'm not going to have him move at all. All adjacent enemies suffer one damage. They are both at five, so they were both take one damage and pass on. Dropping some treasure. Then the favorite. Place one of your character tokens on this card. You may add plus three attack to any of your ranged attacks by moving the token from this card to the target after the attack ability is resolved. When that target dies, place the token on the hex in which it died. If you loot that hex, return the token to this card. And for playing this, we'll get two experience. Then the zealots go, but there's none of them around. So red will go. So he's gonna use some movement here. So one, two, which triggers this door being open and also triggers some more story. So he bursts into the cargo hold and foul smell hits you in the face. A river of sticky black liquid flows through the ship, pouring between the various cracks in the hull. The source appears to be beyond the far door, but first you have to fight your way past more ruffians and their pets. As far as ruffians, like we get one up here. He's not showing up, he's not showing up, but two pets. So two vipers appear. We also get some treasure, some traps, and a coin. And I could keep on going, but I'm just gonna stop there. And then loot one, collect all money tokens and treasure tiles in or adjacent to your hex. So we'll pick up some coinage. As soon as we finish up, the other zealot gets to go. So he's gonna heal himself. He's got move plus one and he wants to attack at ranged. So his movement is gonna be three. So one, two, and three. He's got a range of two, so he's gonna shoot at red here at a minus one. So it's times two. So he'll be doing two damage to us. And we reveal the snake. So he's constricting. They've got to move minus one then they want to attack. So their movement is just going to be one. So this one can move closer and 
these take two movement and moving to the side's not gonna help him any. So he'll just stay right there. And that's our turn. We do have one of our tokens on there. Oh yeah, I forgot. He is plus one on his attack because of the poison. He would have been doing four damage to us. So Hatchet is going to come in with center mass and double throw with a 24 for his initiative. And Red is coming in with shield spikes and healing sands. At a 32. I guess at the end of our other turn, we should have done some shuffling here. So the... Villains modifier stack, along with our zealots. All right, so initiative for the zealots. They're going at 19. And our vipers are going at 18. Goodness. That's not what I wanted to see. So, Vipers, Zealot, Hatchet, and Red Guard. So there are two Vipers. They've got a move plus one, and they've got jump. All attacks targeting Giant Viper gain disadvantage this round. So their normal movement is two, so they've got a move or three with jump. So one... Yes, this one's going to move first. One, two, and three. And this one, one, two, and three. This is going to ruin my whole plan. So the attack here is a base one, minus one. So it's going to do one damage to us, actually two. Oh, and he is a... Different colored snake there. Then the zealot is going to move up. Attack with a plus one, minus one, so base two. So doing one damage to us. And we are cursed. So the curse card will be shuffled into our modifier stack and once we draw that it will be removed from our deck so that did not go well so now hatchet gets to go of course his plan was to move in here push this guy into a trap and shoot to enemies that is not going to work this time because he is in the way. So instead we'll go double throw first. So he gets an attack two, range of three, he can target two enemies. And we're gonna call favorite on that cleric. So we're gonna have base five on him. So five damage. Out of six. And then two on this one. So that will be doing three damage to take that snake out. Dropping a coin. Then we've got a move three and a push two. So one, two, three. And we can't push him back into there. Well, I guess we could push one and two. So difficult terrain does not affect push and pull abilities. Then we'll collect this coin. Then for red, he's gonna heal himself for, but the poison will prevent the healing portion, but we can, the heal does take the poison off. And that will get us one experience. Then he's going to do a ranged heal on his friend over here. Just remove that poison. And that's going to complete that round.
So next round, we don't have much of a choice. We've got two cards in hand. I guess we could have done a short rest, but we're not going to. Let's see, if, so we're, we want to go first, second win in retrieval, going with an 18. And over here, Desert Knight twirling stabs with a 38. And I don't think I had anything triggering re or shuffling. So the Zealots will be going at 46. And the Vipers at 43. So we've got Hatchet, the Red Guard, then Vipers and the Zealot. So for Hatchet, he is going to go with his move five first for the lower ability. So one, two, three, four, and stay right there. Then retrieval, he's got a base attack too. And if the target has your favorite token, return the token to its card. So the target does have that. So the base two attack. Plus one, so three damage. So the Zealot is gone. And we are gonna use this for the base movement of two. So one, two. And then attack two, target one enemy within two hexes to disarm. So if we don't kill it, we're going to disarm the snake, knock out a tooth or a fang. So base two, one damage. But he is disarmed, so no attack this round for him. He does have a toxic frenzy, so he's got some movement. He's already happy with where he's at, just goes to attack and loses that. And that is going to require some shuffling over here before we go to our next round. And we're doing a short rest for our characters. So shuffling, and we're going to lose one of our cards. We can take a damage not to lose the one. And I think we'll just lose our stopping power. And for red, he will end up losing shocking advance. All right, red is going swift strength and a flaming sickle. 16, second win center mass for Hatchet with initiative of 18, and the Viper is also going at an 18. And we win ties. So Red first, then Hatchet, then the Viper. So for Red, it's going to use the bottom here for movement of up to two, just take one step back. Then he's going to Make a range attack of two on up to two targets and then pull. So hoping to kill him with the trap. We can't kill him outright. So base two, minus one. So we're doing one damage. Then we're going to pull him on this trap and that will end the snake. And then for us, we are going to move five. So one, two, three, four, and five to get to the treasure, which is 10. And for the top ability, we've got no one to attack. So number 10 gets us the Fateful Compass, item number 27. So the compass during your turn, force one enemy within range three to perform a move two action with you controlling the action. Huh. I like that with traps around. And since there's no more enemies on the board, they don't get to do anything. All right, for next round, we're gonna use Disorienting Barrage in Close Cuts. 
Initiative of 25. Then initiative of 32 for red. There's no baddies out here at the moment. So Hatchet goes first. It's going to move four. One, two, three, four, which opens the door. But we get to read some text here. So the smell gets even worse when you finally open the door to the back of the cabin. More of these rogue madmen are performing some sort of incantation over an altar piled high with severed limbs and unidentifiable mounts of flesh. With flies buzzing and the strange guttural howls, all you want to do is get as far away as possible. But you have a job to do, so you commence with the killing. So we're getting a zealot here. Not one there, but we're getting a bigger snake now. We do get to finish our turn. Oh, we moved and looted. Now we've got an attack one, range of three. We can target three characters, so one, two, and three. And we can still see there and give the muddle. So up to three enemies within three hexes suffer one damage plus a modifier and gain disadvantage on all their attacks until the end of their next turn. So we'll shoot up here first. So base one, minus one, so nothing except a muddle. Then over on this snake, we're gonna make that our favorite snake. So four damage, five damage on him, which is just the magic number that we needed. So that falls along with our little token. Now we'll get an initiative for him to see where he goes. So 27, he'll be acting now. He's gonna heal himself one, but he doesn't have any damage. He's got movement of plus one, and he wants to do a ranged attack. So he'll move over here, getting a ranged attack on us, but it'll be a disadvantage because he's muddled. His base attack is just one, and he's getting no bonuses. So we'll take one damage. Then red gets to go. He feels like healing himself for four. So up to seven health, gains an, an XP. Then a movement of six. So one, two, three, four, five, and can't go any further. And losing this card. Then end of turn, we do some shuffling over here. The Zealots. And I think we're gonna do a short rest here. So we've got three cards here. Give it a shuffle. And we're gonna lose a flaming sickle. And prepare for our next round. Hatchet has two cards, going with a retrieval and double throw with an initiative of 46. Guess I should make sure, yeah, what that door is on. And he's gonna use his blinding sickle and healing hands for Initiative of 87, and the Zealot is gonna be at 46. So on ties, we get to go first, then the Zealot, then the Red Guard. Well, we'll use our base move of two. Let's just move in the difficult terrain, then attack two, and if he had our favorite token, we'd return it, but he's not our favorite. So base two attack, Minus one, so one damage on that guy. Out of six. And then he is going to find cover. So he wants to move with a plus one and jumping, but he's attacking. All attacks targeting, oops, let me read the right card. We've got boil blood. So he wants to move away from us. Oh, well, moving back there, should have put a coin when we open this door up. Except he doesn't have movement. All right, I'll get this right eventually. He's doing a range attack, but he's adjacent to us. He is gonna muddle us and he's plus one attack. So it's 
disadvantage. We'll take the minus one. So he was a three. So doing two damage to us. Down to five. And we are muddled. So don't have to worry about the snakes. I'll get them out of the way. Then red is going to move four. So one, two, three. And give some encouragement to his friend in front of him and heal himself for four. So that's going to take him up to 10 health and gives him another experience. And over here, end of round, taking a short rest. Losing a second wind. I think we can deal with that. We'll go with close cuts and disoriented barrage with an initiative of 25. And red's coming in with swift strength and twirling stabs. Initiative of 16. And our zealot is going 77. So he's good with going last. Red guard goes first. So he's going to move two with jump, which allows him to go from one here. Get shield for the rest of the turn. Then attack two, targeting all adjacent enemies. So he's a base two, doing one damage. So up to two out of six. And over here, we are muddled. So disadvantage on all attacks, remove at the end of the next turn. I think what we'll do, we can move up to two hexes away. All adjacent enemies suffer one damage. So one, two, suffers a damage. Then because we can, we're going to use our dagger. During your melee attack, add poison to a single attack. And use our attack three. So because we're muddled, we're at disadvantage. So we miss on the times two, but we do get three damage, taking you up to six. And that will kill all our enemies. All right, so we finished scenario three. So we get to record experience points. So we note our experience total and completing this and all other scenarios covered in this book reward six experience to each character. So it's going to take us 45 to get to level two. So hatchet goes to eight and red goes to nine. And of course we notice our gold. He picked up one, so that's going to be an additional two. So going from five to seven. And red got two, so that's going to be four gold. So he'll be going up to five. And of course, we need to read our conclusion here. It certainly doesn't give you pleasure sifting through the human remains on the altar, but it does end up proving useful in between the bouts of vomiting. Uh, you find a necklace, one Sandy described in detail as never leaving the neck of her husband. With this in hand, you can bring at least some peace to the blacksmith's widow and inform the city guard about this whole situation. Still, you have a sneaking suspicion this isn't the end of the trail. These rogue men were certainly all underlings, which means Roland is still out there. One could make the argument that this is the city guard's job, but you search the cabin or the ship anyway and find a curious map. The crude depiction of the boiler district and one building is clearly marked. Surely it couldn't hurt to check it out. So each character gains one perk. We'll see what that means here in the Learn to Play Guide. And new location, a ritual in stone. So sticker four going to area C2. All right, so we've added our new sticker. So perks are going to be permanent changes to our deck. So basically it's either removing cards or replacing cards. So we get to choose that for each of our characters. 
And for both of those, I'm just gonna make it simple. Remove two negative one cards from each of them. So we'll go through our stack and find those and remove them, along with the curse card that we got. So these are removed from Hatchet. And red removes those. Then we are introduced to city interaction events. So we'll be drawing one of those and resolving. So we will take all the city cards, give them a shuffle, and then draw the top card of the stack. And it's gonna give us a scenario. So there's a saying, mess with the sleeping lion and you'll get the jaws. Today's one of those days where you earn that drink discount. You knock on the door of Zian, an orchid who switched from providing assurances to providing excuses. He opens up and you let him know it's time to settle his tab. Oh, come on. He sent the jaws? Right, okay, problem is you're a day early. Got a lot of gold coming my way, huge haul on some bets, guaranteed money. You notice some packed bags inside the doorway, Zian speaks up. Oh, that's nothing, but just my plan B, no big deal. Don't need that anymore. I'm rolling in cash, or at least I will be tomorrow. Heck, I'd even be willing to toss you something for the delay. Uh, option A, not buying it, he pays up now. Or option B, a little trust goes a long way, come back tomorrow. Um, I'm not too trusting of this guy, so we're gonna choose option A. Uh, you shake Zian down for whatever he's got on him. He whines about not having the gold, but you gather enough to pay most of his debt. To make up the difference, you help yourself to a trinket on your way out. Might be useful, or you could just pawn it for drinking money. So we gain an oak charm. So the oak charm. Uh, during your turn, perform a bless, so we'd get a card to shuffle into our deck, and then a range five action. And since Hatchet already has two small items, we'll give this to red. Now, if we would have chosen side B, we would have ended up with 20 collective gold, but uh, that's worth 30, so I think we made the better choice, and this will be removed from the game. And we will perform one of these at the end of each new scenario. And finally, we're gonna remove all of our A and B cards and pick up all of our level one cards. So let's get all these out of the way. Okay, so we've got a total of 10 cards. We've got the favorite, retrieval, close cuts, center mass, stopping power, double throw, disorient and barrage, a power pitch, follow through, and second wind. And then for red, he's going to end up with swift strength. Healing Sands, Shield Spikes, Flaming Sickle, a Blinding Sickle, Twirling Stabs, Flame Shroud, Shocking Advance, Shield of the Desert, and Desert Knight. So a whole lot of new symbols on here that I assume we're gonna learn about in our next scenario. So as always, hope you enjoyed this playthrough. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.